Going to it, boys. What is the their plan? Oh. Okay, I'll go have Chris do flat out runs so we get the, the torque reading. Let's go, we want to get the maximum torque the car will make. Okay. Um, okay. Do that on this road? Yeah, that's true. Does it need to be any certain gear or no? It doesn't matter. Hey guys, we're, we're back tuning with the 8-speed. Got Bartek on the phone. Bartek says hi. And uh, we're going to dial this thing in. Luckily, we've got this great little test road right here where we can kind of do whatever we want and not get too bothered. So right now we're going to measure what the maximum torque of the car will make uh, on the can signal. Scale all the maps. Don't hit the guy in the lawnmower. Hey, guy. All right. Yep. Boost controller, but do you need more? God, that guy's not good enough with no, no boost it was controller. Only We're uh, we just turned the boost controller on. We're gonna give it one more rip for you too. Okay. Max torque value you just saw? 900 newton meter. 900 newton meter. Is this it's it's a number? I know that you see you only read 600. Well, we have it on the can going up. I don't know. Currently stuck behind this thing after almost dying in an extreme braking event. Oh my god. Can I go after this black truck before the semi? Uh, I guess. Oh, he's slowing down, of course. Yikes. So we just got done. Tuning with Bartek. Tuning with Bartek. It really is great. It, it, it ships super smooth on light loads. Um, when we get out of this traffic jam, we'll go do some higher load stuff real quick to show you guys. Yeah. Um, we went through what tables need to adjust, and we're going to show you when we get back to the shop. Super nice and easy. There's only really two tables you got to worry about with the 8 speed. Um, let's do some gear shifts.
showing us the GCU is actually adapting over time. And even when we, you know, the drive we were just doing, uh, it was getting better. Uh, basically, on the high load stuff, we, Chris hadn't been driving too much because we just got the boost controller in. So we had slight flares, but after we did the two pulls, the flares were gone. So it was pretty cool to see the GCU just adapting on the fly like that and uh, making changes without even have to do, having, you, having to do anything. Yeah. So uh, we'll pull off here real quick, I guess. This is our road here. 23 mile. Yeah, baby. Yeah, I mean, even coming off the highway, like I'm following this truck, but like I can just downshift off throttle and it's not like ignorantly aggressive. Like it doesn't shake the car or anything. Yeah, and this is turned up. We have the downshift turned up yeah. right now. So I like, want them to be crispy, but like, still, like this is no different than like driving any other automatic car. Yeah. Oh, that little burble. All right. Yeah. But it's uh, 10 o'clock in the morning. We're sweating balls. It's and hot. Obviously, there's traffic jams. So. Yeah, not the best. Maybe we'll go out tonight and get some like real rippers on the highway. Yeah. That'd be cool. Yeah. But uh, we'll get we'll get ripped on the road and uh, we'll show you guys some how to tune these things on the laptop when we get back inside. Yeah, pretty simple. Yeah. This is gonna be so DIY friendly, right? Like, uh, it's great. Like anyone can just click the closed loop button. Like you really like, you it don't the work actually for you. need to be a calibration engineer or you don't need to hire someone like, I mean, people will offer it, but like, I mean, geez, for someone to tune this, it's like, okay, 250 bucks, and then we'll go spend like an hour or two, and then you'd be like the most dialed in you could ever possibly Yeah, be. and then as you like, drive more, it'll just get closer. Yeah, exactly. So like, you're and just- Even before tuning, I would probably recommend that they like, like I put 165 miles on it the past yeah. few days, just right. helping the, the, it the, learn. the tuning is almost just help getting help to select the type of shift you're targeting. You're not, yeah, you're just not, like you're, your personal driving style, Yeah, it's right? just adjusting the preferences, yeah. basically. Some people want a really aggressive downshift all the time. Like, now I'm trying to start in third gear. I do need a gear indicator, so I know what gear I'm in. Uh, Lee's sending us that new one, yeah. so it should be all set. Lee Burley makes some nice gear indicators. We're going to put it right here yep. on the dash. It's going to be sweet. Yeah, so... Oh my God, this midday traffic, what, does nobody work? What's going, what, what is this? No, I really don't think they do. This. Yeah, yeah, you, you, yeah, you yeah. handle that. <laughs> so, this is the eight speed um, tune that we have up right now. Just watch your hands waving around. Yeah, so, so I, can you guys, can you see my mouse here? Yeah, they can. So, the main things you want to adjust is a closed loop US, meaning upshift synchronization rate, and the downshift synchronization rate. So, this is gear, and this is torque. Um, this torque number is output by the our stock ECU. If you have a standalone, the GCU is going to calculate it for you using a different strategy, but it's really all the same thing. Um, the numbers inside are like RPM drop per second, essentially, um, what is targeting. So under light load, we drop RPMs very slowly, very calmly. Everything's much more relaxed. But once we get over 500 newton meters, we're really starting to hammer down on the shift speeds. And then above 800 newton meters, basically when you're flat out, 
the car is just ripping gears. Like it's going as fast as it can essentially. We have 25,000 up here. So um, if you are driving your 8 HP swap car and you wanna smooth out the shifts on the upshift, you're gonna wanna you know, lower the numbers wherever you're seeing this. You can just watch the box float around and you'll see where your maps kinda are to kinda locate where you wanna change the values. Um, if you're, let's say, on the track and you're like, man, I wish my upshifts were crispier, you can definitely just go up on the values. Like we have these jammed up pretty high at 25,000. You can go higher. Bartek said there's no real way to tell how high you can go just to keep testing. Um, yeah, because at some point you're just going to be limited by how fast your flywheel slows down. Yeah, that's what he says. You're battling physics at a certain point yeah. um, because you are stopping and starting a converter. So you need to, yeah, there's yeah. a lot of stuff to do. Things do happen. And I'm, like, right, like this... You can't defy physics. Everyone, I would love for it to just teleport into the next gear, but that's like not how the world works. Even oh, really? the best OEM really calibration water. engineers, right? Like you can only physically move so fast. Yeah. I think that was a problem with DCTs at the beginning. People wanted the shift speed so crazy that they were like, They're one weird. clutch wasn't out yet. While the next <laughs> one was like slamming in and people were like, I don't understand why it's breaking. I'm just shifting at 0 0.005 milliseconds. Yeah. <laughs> So, and then here's the downshift one. This one's much more chill. Essentially, um, you're on like a, when you're slowing down, downshifting, you're obviously, uh, like there's no load really on your engine. It's not really making anything, so you're lifted. So th these numbers are what you're gonna want to uh, adjust for your downshifts. Like this little, what I highlighted right there. Um, yeah, because downshift's almost weird to explain, right? Because like you're either off pedal completely, yeah. just like, rolling which is zero mm -hmm. or you're like braking which is zero you're yeah. not really like in a pedal position and downshifting no very rarely very or if rarely. you are it's very small so it's like, so like a, you're almost like cruising and you're just like all right i'm gonna pass this guy so while i'm cruising i'm gonna downshift one just yeah. to get like in a passing gear or in a case of eight speed it's like i'm gonna downshift two because you're like yeah. why not because <laughs> i can because i can so, but yeah for like breaking downshift kind of like a track oriented downshift like what you're like what everybody talks about like i want a crispy blip on downshift these are the cells you're going to want to change. You can just go up with that number if you want a quicker downshift and go down with the number if you want a slower downshift. So these originally were at like 900 and the car was very smooth on downshifts, very relaxed. It was very um, like a Cadillac, you know, it was very nice. Yeah, uh, it was just rolling. But I mean, we were like, can we go faster? And Bartek's like, yeah, let's, yeah. And we started downshifting and it was just getting sweeter and sweeter. And it's, you, you start, as you adjust these, you start to blend the capability of the DCT and the 8HP together. It, yeah. doesn't, it doesn't really feel. You, don't your really butt feel, dyno can't really tell the difference. There's not that big of a difference. <clears throat> um, you can tell. You can tell kind of by the power delivery because the DCD doesn't have the, the converter, so it's much like it's more direct in it quite a bit. But as far as the downshift, like the actual shift speeds, it seems pretty similar. Yeah, I would say for downshifts though, keep an eye on like, because at first when we were just like playing around with it, not fully understanding, like I would get rear tire lock. Oh yeah. On hard hard downshifts, so that was something that Bartek helped smooth that out. So. These maps, this is vehicle speed below, and this is input shaft speed versus input shaft speed target. Let me zoom in here. So you can see the actual input shaft speed higher in some areas, and that is a flare on shifts. So these are the early shifts where you had flare, and as you can see the self-learning work, the flares go completely away. And that's pretty cool because that means that the self-learning closed loop is actually working. You see in these high load shifts, just like we had before, there's no, there's no more flare. The target is literally the same as the actual, which is fantastic to see. Um, it's really cool to actually see these things like working in real life. And you know, everybody says, oh, this does this. I, I, you know, I've, I've had standalone ECUs that have auto-tune. Yeah. <laughs> but that didn't, it never works, right? And it, so no. it's really cool to see this actually work. So I'm excited to see the new update with the DCT closed loop. I think it'll bring that to the next level of yeah. user uh, user ease, you know? And uh, yeah, 8HP, you know, I'm, I'm impressed. I'm thoroughly impressed. And I mean, the car makes like probably around 700 wheel horsepower on that map and I'm in an 8HP 50 just ripping. Yeah, you can see it. like there, it's not slipping, like, no, right? The, no, so she's the, holding the power perfectly fine. The 50 is not having a single issue at all. I think the next thing for us to test is probably get the trans brake hooked up and start playing with those fun things and get, yeah. the, get the foot clutch hooked up. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's pretty awesome. I mean, 
Um, you know, it's super sweet. For just the 8 HP 50, we literally bought with like 20,000 miles on it for like, I think we bought it for like $450 or something. Yeah. It looked brand new. Literally, yeah. Uh, I can could not be happier. I mean, no, they're gonna be. It's gonna be this. Like I, I tell Mike every time we talk about this, this is going to be the most DIY friendly thing. Like yeah. it's going and to I, be ooh, it's, super, super obtainable for like everyone. I talked to HTG last night about it. Actually, um, either Bartek just ordered a E90 dash, so the uh, HTG is gonna get a can preset all set up, so the dash works like factory. That way, you can install this into like a factory car with full interior, like a street car, and not ruin it by making it like race car. Yeah. And uh, just the factory dash will work like normal, so you can see what gear you're on and all that stuff. So yeah, I guess yet. when Mike says that though, we preface that like everything on my dash works because it's a manual car, so it never knew what gear. Yeah, it, we have... it just doesn't have a gear display. Like normally, your car would have a gear display in the middle. Yeah, that's the only thing that doesn't function with the dash right now. But yeah, every single other function does work with the dash. So that is what Vartek's trying to get. So yeah, that we don't, don't hear that. Be nervous and be like, "What? I don't have RPM on the dash." No, no, no. It's just, it's just so you have a gear indicator on the dash. That'd be great, right? Like, and also, oh yeah, it saves me from buying in a separate gear indicator. Yeah, and like the hard part, like coming from a manual, like I, once you drive a manual, you know what gear you're in all the time. Mm -hmm. Like even if you're not shifting, like you just like. No, but they're, Somehow, so, they're so close in the eight speed. It's hard to tell. You just are flying through gears in the eight well, speed. Well, we you were on the highway flipping. and you were at one twenty before. I even realized it. I, I honestly didn't realize we're doing one hundred twenty because you went. Through, it's so smooth and we went through the gear so quick. I was just like, look yeah. over. Oh, we're doing. I was quickly passing one. Like, <laughs> they're going slow. Like, look over the the mile per hour. I'm like, oh my god. Yeah, it just so that's the, like the reason I want a gear indicator and why we're pushing on this a little is because you do get lost. Yeah, especially it's, you a just good, keep, it's a good thing. Yeah, it's a good thing, right? You just like. You click it through a bunch of years, you're like, oh, I'm flying, and then you come back down, and sometimes I stop in third on accident. Yeah, like, like the RPMs stop. are just normal, so I'm just like, oh, I'm starting in third right Yeah, now. so I think the updates coming up was we'll do a trans brake, we'll do clutch by wire, those will be two fun mods. Um, help with your donut capabilities. Yeah. And um, and uh, what was that? And we'll, whatever we were just talking about. The dash integration. The dash. Yes, yeah, so that'd be awesome. Yeah, I mean, and other than that, guys, like, it's been like a week. Yeah, we just, it's been, we haven't really, this like, since like, we fixed my pedal issues, which was our fault, yeah, nothing to do with them, like, in a week, it just, it rips. Super great, I love it. Yeah. I love it. But, uh, yeah, I mean. So, yeah, this is just, this is the tuning side of the 8HP, which Two just, maps, wow. You literally, <laughs> yeah, and just, I mean, we went out in, you know, in an hour of just doing the same maneuver over and over again, just dialing in these two maps and then. It's crazy. It's li And it's like not, it is tuning, right? But like it did 90%. This is the last 10% to just make it yeah, personally how I want auto, it to we, drive. We just let it auto tune and we adjusted the synchronization rates and we're ready to go. Yeah. Mint. Well, thanks for watching guys. Uh, stay tuned. We're gonna do some fun stuff coming up as we get more things hooked up to this eight speed swap. And uh, I mean, let us know if you have any questions, shoot us an email or something for when you want to eight speed swap your car. Yeah. Uh, we have everything in stock to do it. We have lots of HTGs, we have lots of adapter kits, we have lots of everything you could possibly need for 8, 8 HP, DCT, DSG, and also even PDK. Uh, HTG is really uh, user friendly and has even more transmissions coming out soon. Like the, I know the R35 GTR transmission is going to be yeah. coming out soon. So we can, uh, you know, stand low control of that. So there's a lot of cool stuff in the mix. Uh, HTC has been super helpful, and uh, if you're in the U.S. especially, just give us a shout. We can definitely help with any transmission swap project you have. All right. Catch you in the next one. Peace. Peace.